Alright, so I got a special video today. Um, I was sent this MacBook by a YouTube viewer. His name is Albert um, from New Jersey. He shipped over this MacBook, so I'm going to see if I can fix it. It's liquid damage. Liquid damage sometimes, depending how bad it is, might not be worth fixing because it might need a replacement board and possibly a replacement screen. Um, but anyways, I disconnected the battery already. So I've done some videos on these models before, so if there's any stuff you're a little confused on, you can just rewatch my old videos and hopefully you'll be able to figure it out. So, all right. So anyways, first thing you want to do is remove the pentalobe screws on the bottom. They're pentalobe 1.2s. I already did that, so there's one, two, excuse me, three, four, five, six, okay. Um, this is a 13-inch uh, model A1708. Uh, I believe it's a 2017 model. All right. So once you remove all the screws, you want to use a suction cup, or you can try and just pry up the cover. But it's easier with a suction cup, or you can also use tape. If you have, if you don't have a suction cup, the way you use tape is you get two strands, you kind of stick them on, and then you have them meet in the middle like this. So that way, it's like a pull tab, and then you can just grab and pull the tape up. Alright, so anyways, take the suction cup or the tape, pull on the cover, and then get between the two layers here, okay? Once you get between the two layers, you want to go down the sides, and then what I do is I use my fingernails to pull on the cover, and then my thumb to push on the, um, the part that's separate, which is the palm rest keyboard assembly, okay? Just like that, alright? Then you go down, go to the other side, do the same thing. I forgot to actually slid out the cover, so let me slide it back the way it should be um, because now it's just going to come out like that. <laughs> so anyways, this cover, normally, it would be like this. So I guess you can see how to slide it back, but you put it on like that, line it up, and then you line up one side edge, and then you push it in to get that lined up. You also have to push down on this side so that the sliding mechanism um, goes in place. So here you can see when it's like normal, the cover won't come off like that. You have to slide it down. So normally it'll be clipped in. I'll clip one side back in, but same idea. Um, you go around again, get underneath the cover, and then pull up the cover with your nails, or you can use a pry tool and try and pop it up, but I find this works best. And then I push on the bottom like that with my thumb. Okay, pops up like that. The easiest way to get this cover off, you put it up like this. If you have a soft surface like this, you use it. Um, if you don't have anything like this, you can use like a piece of cardboard or something. Just put your MacBook on the cardboard like that. Put some, wrap some fingers over the back of the screen like this. And then push on this, this part here, okay? And then at the same time, grab the cover and pull it down while you're pushing it. And it will come out like that. So a lot of times the cover will be on pretty stiff. So you have to pull pretty hard and push on this. Basically, it'll pop down like that. And then the other side should come out pretty easily. But that's how you remove the cover. Oops, I left this here. So that's, yeah, that's how you remove the cover. And then normally you'll have this um, plastic piece sticking on here. As you can see, there's this little sticker. It normally will stick to that screw. I think they opened it already because there were, it looked like things were moved around. But anyways, the thing will be here. You just pull it and peel it up, okay? Just like that. After that, you want to peel back this tab here. Let me zoom in so you can see. Okay, so you got this tab. You can peel this back. They kind of ripped the tab off. But anyways, um, underneath here, there's this little latch. So I flipped it up already. But you would flip this tab up like that. All right. And then you can grab the cable and pull it out. So to put it back, it slides underneath. Um, you'll see when you take yours out how it's how it is. But I'm just going to leave it out for now because I don't want to reconnect the battery and then risk getting more damage since there is liquid damage on this. Okay. So let me zoom out again. Um, okay. So after you pull this cable out, there's one T5 screwdriver underneath the cover. Okay, so I already removed that screw. So there's a big T5 screw that will be under this one. Okay, so just take out that T5 screw. 
Once you remove that screw, there's this metal tab here that the screw was holding down. So what you wanna do, let's see if I can zoom in to show this a little bit better. So what you wanna do is you wanna pull this tab from this side, okay? And just bend it up a little bit so that way it's no longer touching the battery connector underneath. All right, so I'm gonna leave that there. Uh, they did also bring in a replacement battery in case the battery needs to be replaced. I don't see any liquid damage on the battery itself, though these little, oops, let me zoom back out. Though the little markers down here did turn red, so it's red here as well. So it looks like liquid got throughout the whole MacBook. So I have a feeling that this isn't gonna be repairable, but we're gonna try anyways, all right? So we're gonna need a T4 as well as T5 screwdriver to disconnect everything. What we're gonna be doing is taking the logic board out and then I'm gonna be cleaning that up. All right, so we're taking the T5 screwdriver. So if you see me using this green one, that's the T5 screwdriver. Okay, you wanna try and keep all the screws in order so they don't get all mixed up. Uh, the way I do that is I just, as you can see, like it's like this, I just take them out and then put them in that pattern on my desk going up this way. So if I take out the screws like this, I'll just grab the screw. It helps to also have like a magnetic mat where the screws don't just all stick together. So that way you can do that and then basically do that. So just like this, it comes out like that. And then I'll also keep them closer together. So that way it doesn't take up too much space on my desk, okay? So basically like that and you see that L shape, just like on the speakers, okay? So that's how I keep track of the screws. All right, so remove those. Then we're gonna disconnect the speaker. So just like the battery connector, if you didn't get how to do that from the battery connector, since I already had it removed, here you can see. Well, actually, what you wanna do after you disconnect the battery is open it up and then press and hold the power button for about uh, 15 seconds or so. And that'll drain any power out of the board so that it won't cause any issues, but they probably already completely fried it, but we'll try and see if it's fixable. Excuse me. All right. So after you drain the power, just peel up this plastic tab here. Okay. Just like this. Once you peel that up, same thing like the other one, flip up the little latch. All right. As you can see, there's liquid damage on here as well. I didn't really show it that clearly, but there's a bunch of liquid damage here. And then also there's some here. So this thing has liquid damage all over it, but yeah. All right, so we're gonna pull this connector out. You can use the little plastic tab to kind of pull it. Um, but yeah, it's gonna be a little bit tricky. You might end up just peeling off that tab by doing that. So the better way to do it is if you have a little tool that you can get underneath. Okay, this is probably too big, but you can get a tool underneath and then you can use your finger to press it against the tool and pull it back just like this, okay? Or you can just kind of pinch it. That works too, or use tweezers, okay? So there you go. Pull that cable out. I'm gonna zoom out so you can see. Oops, too far. All right, after you do that, you can actually lift the speaker up, okay? Just like this, and then you can pull this out, all right? So I'm gonna brush this connector off, or the speaker off, with a toothbrush. So I just get a toothbrush and I just brush it off, but I have a trash can next to me, so I brush the dust into there if I can. Okay, it does sometimes go flying around, but yeah, all right? Then the connector here, you can kind of just wipe it off. If it's like has some stubborn stuff there, you can use rubbing alcohol. If that stuff still doesn't come out, you can try using a little um, white vinegar to try and clean it off and then just rinse it off. You don't wanna leave vinegar on the connectors cause the acid can kind of cause it to oxidize faster. All right. All right, so now we got the speaker out. We're gonna take that and set it aside. All right. We're gonna remove the second speaker on this side. Same idea, but there's only two screws here. Okay. Same thing, let's remove these two screws. Okay. Technically you don't have to pull the screws out if you want, cause there's actually rubber that kind of holds it in place, but I take it out just so in case it like falls out or something, I don't want it to fall out and get lost. So I'll pull out the screws, okay. 
All right, so we're gonna disconnect the speaker on this side. Same thing, peel up the plastic, flip up the latch, and then find a place where you can lift the speaker up from, just like this, all right? Be careful not to pull it too far and then damage that cable. So this part kind of slides out from there, like that, all right? And then you can pull the cable out just like this, okay? So this one also has a little corrosion on it, so I'm gonna wipe it off as well. All right, I don't know if it will come out. It's not as shiny. It might have been burnt from the electricity that went through it. All right, I'm gonna clean this speaker off as well. It's kind of dusty. So I don't know if this is gonna work, but the customer sent it to me, so we're gonna give it a shot. All right. All right, then if you wanna take the SSD out, there's two screws here and this adhesive. I already semi peeled the adhesive. I think they might have peeled it as well because when I was peeling it out, it came out pretty easily. All right, so we'll take out the two screws holding the SSD in place. You don't have to take out the SSD to take out the um, logic board or the motherboard, but I'm gonna take it out anyways, just to see because there's liquid nearby. All right, so again, make sure you peeled up all of this adhesive so that it's no longer touching this connector part here. After you do that, you can actually lift up the SSD slightly. I lifted it up with my thumb and then you can kind of get underneath the connectors there where the screws were holding it. And then from the sides, you kind of just pull it back and wiggle it just like that. All right? So we got the SSD out. Hopefully the SSD isn't damaged. Um, but it's kind of tough with these little covers that they put on top. Um, I've never peeled off those covers, but because liquid got in it, I'm going to see if I can pull up the cover from the SSD. So you got these metal plates here. I don't know if you'll be able to see, but there's like these little dots on the metal plates and those kind of help hold it into the metal. So I'm just getting my fingernail underneath. You can use like pry tools or something, but I find this works best. Just go underneath and then I just pop it up just like that. All right, there we go. So there you go, you can see they had some uh, thermal, uh, what do you call that, thermal pads underneath. It's kind of like coming out. Anyways, we'll stick that back down. It goes back together really easy, you just sandwich it back on top and smush it down. We'll check the bottom of the SSD as well, same thing. I just get my fingernail in between and then it works best, oops, it works best at the little wings here. So just get your fingernail in there or a pry tool and then pop it up like that, okay? Once you get that, it all comes out and there we go. You can see two more thermal pads or thermal paste in there that was just on top of the memory chips. And the stuff looks okay, so we're gonna just put it back together, okay? Just slide it back on top, make sure you have it facing the same way you took it out and squeeze the two layers back together. All right, there we go. We'll set that aside. Okay. Now, let's see here what we got next. All right, so let's remove the wireless antennas or at least just disconnect them. So we'll undo the screw here. Okay, let me zoom in a little bit for you. Okay, undo that screw, we'll set it aside. It's gonna be a little tricky to remember where all these go because I'm not putting them in the exact order on my desk since there's so many little pieces that can be removed. So I just put the screws next to those pieces. But anyways, for the wireless antenna, just get underneath the tail like that and then pop it up. All right, both sides, same thing, this one as well, underneath the tail and pop it up. So I'm not gonna remove the wireless antenna board completely. I'm just gonna hold it up out of the way when I take the board out. And I believe all the rest let me see, did they actually use T5? No, these are, oh yeah. Huh, they didn't actually use T4 on this model. So, I guess most of these are T5. Okay, they did use some T4s, but only for like the video connector cables. I am going to have to disconnect that. So let's go to the T4 screwdriver before I forget and we'll remove these screws, okay? So remove that too. If you are going to remove the screen connector, you wanna make sure that you press and held down the power button after disconnecting the battery. 
that's very important or you can damage the screen connector all right you took out those two screws we'll pull off this metal plate all right we'll take out the two screws holding this piece as well because this is holding down the cable which is attached to the bottom of the logic board okay so it's very important you have to take this out otherwise you will tear that cable all right so take out all four screws here the rest of the screws we can leave in since I'm going to leave the screen in place. If the screen is dead, then there's not really much I can do. We'd have to replace that screen and the screen is pretty expensive. They're like around three, four hundred dollars just for the part. All right. So once we remove all of those, you got the LCD or LVDS connector here. Okay. Just get underneath with your fingernail or pry tool and then you just pop it up just like that. All right. Move it out of the way. Sorry, the camera's shaking every time I zoom. All right. Okay, so we got all of that out. Next, we're going to remove everything else from the board. Um, I don't remember if I have to peel this up. I don't think so. Well, I'll peel it up anyways. So this rubber piece, I'm just going to pull it up and get it out of the way. Okay. All right, so now let's go ahead and see if everything else comes out with the T5. We got this little bracket here that's holding in the, I think that's the power button as well as the uh, headphone jack cable. I don't know if it's all of them. Actually the power button I think on this one is integrated into the keyboard so this is just for the headphone jack. Okay so remove those two screws. They are different sizes. The screw down here is a smaller screw than this one is a bigger so make sure not to mix them up again. All right then we'll pull this metal bracket off. Okay and we'll set it down there. All right, then you got this connector here. Just pop it up. It's a little bit more difficult to pop up this connector, but just be careful because there is an adhesive also holding it here and you don't want to crease this cable if you can help it, all right? So to peel this up, I try and get as close to the connector, the adhesive as I can. And then I pull it back this way to kind of make it stretch to keep it flat while I kind of peel it up. Okay, so just like this. Okay, you don't need to pull this all the way off. I'm just peeling it up to get it out of the way, just like that. All right, now we're going to remove, oh, why is there a speaker rubber piece stuck down here? That's kind of strange. So this rubber piece is supposed to be stuck in the speaker. I don't know why, but it was stuck down here and it got actually stuck to the board and popped out. So I'm gonna put that rubber piece back in here. Okay, hopefully it will go in. Yeah, I don't know if it's gonna go in. This is kind of a difficult thing to put back in. So maybe when I put the screw in, it will force it back down because it doesn't wanna go in. Let me try with the screwdriver. Well, hopefully you guys don't have to deal with this piece. I'm kind of just pushing it in around the edges to try and get it to go back in. And it looks like it's somewhat going. Okay. And then, come on. Oops, it went all the way through. Yeah, I don't know how I'm gonna line that back up. It's tricky. Um, I don't know if anyone wants to see this part, but you can fast forward over basically just trying to get this rubber piece to go back in properly okay i think i got it okay there we go i got it so i'll set that aside okay so now let's take out the rest of the screws we got one screw down here okay we got this connector here, so you want to peel up this plastic tab, flip this latch up, and then we can pull this back. And this looks like the keyboard connector. All right. All right, so the keyboard connector actually also um, connects the fan connector here. So I'm not going to take out the fan. I think this is this uses, oh, it actually also uses T5 screws. Um, but this has like the peel up tab just like the rest to remove like these kind of connectors here. So if you wanted to peel up the fan, you can. 
This is held down with adhesive, so I don't want to mess with it because there's a chance um, peeling up those kinds of things is more risky. So I'm going to take out the two screws holding this um, connector, the trackpad connector cover in place. All right, I'll move those two screws. Okay, we'll take out this metal plate. And then we will go underneath with my fingernail or a pry tool and then pop that up. And then just make sure to keep this out of the way. Again, you don't want to try um, crease these cables, so just be careful. I like to pull it opposite way of the adhesive and then pull it up at the same time. All right, so I only need to peel it partially just to get it out of the way. Then we'll take out this screw here. Okay. Just like that. All right, let's see, we got most of the screws out and then we got one screw right here. The thing that worries me is the liquid is very close to the charge ports. So I have a feeling this uh, MacBook charge ports are gonna be toast. All right, so I think that's all the screws. I don't know if there's, oh, there's a screw hiding underneath this. So we will have to use the T4 screwdriver to remove this bracket back here or the hinge cover. Okay, so T4 screws back here, holding this hinge cover in place. Once you remove those two screws, you can lift up this hinge cover, and after you lift it slightly, you can pull it out, just like that. All right, and I'm pretty sure, is this T5 as well? Um, okay, that's also a T5 screw, so remove that. Okay. And then we will set that screw out of the way. Okay, so now the whole board should come up. Be careful because there are cables that are kind of covering the board. So you kind of have to move them out of the way as you lift the board up, okay? Just like that. Lift this side first because the charge ports are still over there. All right, slowly lift it. And then make sure the wireless antennas get out of the way. And after you get it up that far, you can actually pull it away from the frame here. Okay. So here you can see the USB-C charge, charge ports. All right. They're a little dirty. I don't see any burn marks on them or anything. I'm going to take this rubber piece off for now. Okay. <sighs> make sure to put it back when you're done. Okay, so all the liquid spill stickers turned red on this board and inside here, so it must have been a lot of water. I'm going to try and clean up the dust, whatever I can. So the best way to do that with a toothbrush, just hold it so that you have some slight resistance, so that way you can brush it as it slowly turns. Okay, clean up the dust in there. Be careful with the cables when you brush them, that you don't damage the cables. Okay, brush all that stuff up. This battery looks like I can put it after I get everything cleaned up on the board, so I'll test if it doesn't work with the original battery, then I can try the replacement battery and see what happens. All right, so I'm just brushing it all off, off camera. But um, yeah, then I'll use this air blower and blow air into the fan to get the dust out, okay. Sorry, I have to do this off camera so the dust doesn't just end up all over my work area. Okay. It's a lot cleaner now, so spin this fan around. Okay. So, since I don't have a replacement screen, I don't want to mess around with that. I don't see any corrosion on the screen connector, but there could be some corrosion under these, so... I don't know, but on the main connector, I don't see any problems, so we're going to leave it be. I mean, these things did turn red here, so I don't know. We'll, we'll just have to hope for the best, okay? So I'm going to set this aside now, um, and I probably won't do a battery replacement video on this model unless it doesn't work at all, and then I can try the battery, but we'll see. All right, so we'll set that aside. Next, we got the main board. I'm going to have to clean this off. Usually what I do is I run hot water from my tap 
in the sink and then I will take a toothbrush and scrub it off. After I completely scrub this off, I will get, I have an air blower, I'll blow all as much water as I can. And then after I do that, um, I'll spray it down with isopropyl rubbing alcohol. And then I will scrub it again with the toothbrush and then air dry it again with my air blower. And I have an electric one, not, not this air blower. So I'll do that. And then that way I can make sure that all the moisture is cleaned off before I actually um, put this back together. Um, it looks like this sticker stayed white, but um, after I finish cleaning it, because there's water here, damage here too, this will turn red because I have to run water over it and clean it. Um, and then the other thing is I will actually remove this um, cable because it's kind of fragile and I don't want to leave it attached and accidentally um, damage it. So we'll go underneath here. On some models, there's a T4 screw. Let's see if this will work with a T5. Okay, it looks like it is a T4 screw, so I'll stick with a T4 screwdriver. All right, and then be careful when doing this because the board is no longer supported by anything, so I'm gonna hold it with the back of my hand, and then I will use that to twist it. Oh, this screw doesn't wanna come out. Is it a T5? Looks like a T4. Oh, this, this screw doesn't want to come out. It might break my screwdriver. So we'll see. I'll try and get it out. It doesn't want to come out. I think it's just damaging my screwdriver. Let me try with my silver tipped screws. Okay, so I'll try with this one because it feels like it's breaking my other ones. Hmm. Doesn't want to come out. What's this? Is that a security bit? <laughs> hmm. I don't know. Okay, I'm gonna try and put more pressure and twist it off. Okay, it's coming out. There we go. So with this, you kind of have to use a lot of pressure into the screw. Make sure it doesn't come out. Okay. So here we go. Same thing holding from the back and then twisting the screw. There we go. Okay. So it looks like for the tiny uh, screw bits, this silver metal is actually better because I think the other one is more brittle. This one, it just twists around. So yeah, let me try either that or the screw is not the bit's not the right size. Uh, it works okay with this. Yeah, I don't know. All right, so we'll set that screw aside. And then we're going to pop the connector off. All right, it's on the silver piece. All right, just get underneath and then pop it up just like that. There's no cover on this one. Okay. All right, so we got that out. This piece looks okay. The bottom of the board, for the most part, looks okay. There is some liquid damage down here. I don't know if you can see it. I'll zoom in a bit more. So there's some liquid damage down there. And then there's some liquid damage right here. Yeah, so the thing is liquid doesn't really damage the board. It's when you run um, electricity through the liquid and the liquid helps the electricity to go where it shouldn't. And that's what actually damages the board. So anyways, um, yeah, I'm going to clean this off. Uh, basically, as I said, using warm running water, cleaning this, cleaning this, excuse me. And I'll actually scrub all over the board if I can. And then I will use my air blower, dry it up. There's actually also some liquid damage in here. So, yeah. But, yeah, I'll use that. Some warm running water, clean it off, Hope um, get all the residue to come out and then I will dry it off with my electric air blower and then I will clean it with this and then we'll reassemble it and see how it goes. All right so I'm gonna do that now and I'll see you guys in a bit. All right I'm back. So I forgot to mention there's these little rubber pieces that you probably want to remove so you don't lose them um, on the end of the charge ports. All right so anyways I'm gonna put them back on. Alright, 
just stick them back on like that. And if you're wondering, the part that bows upward faces towards the end, okay? So just like that, all right? Anyways, oops, I need to zoom back out too far. All right, so here you can see I cleaned up most of the, or all the corrosion on the board. All right, so it looks all clean now. Um, let's see here. I'm a little worried because this part looks burnt up here. So most likely it's, oops, sorry. Most likely it's not gonna work. So this part got some burning there, um, but we'll find out. All right, cleaned up both sides. There's some like greasy looking residue. That's usually from when you clean it with rubbing alcohol, like sticker residue kind of mixes with it and then it, it starts coming out and then it sticks on everything. So if you want to try and avoid that, um, I mean, you kind of have to be a little careful, I guess, with the adhesive, but other than that, um, the other way you can semi clean it off is you get it like just barely wet with rubbing alcohol and then when you clean it if it dries really fast as you're brushing it it'll get rid of those little streaky looking marks but anyways that's pretty much all as far as cleaning it up goes i'm not able to like diagnose all these little components um I work with somebody that does do those, but I think it's more of a visual thing because you can't really test them while they're connected to the boards, at least not that I know of. So other than seeing it, I'm not sure how people are able to test all these little components on it. Um, if somebody knows, let me know, but yeah. All right, so other than knowing the schematics and how it works, I guess some people like know which way the electricity flows and then you can find out where it's like shorting out or something. All right, but anyways, we're gonna put this rubber piece back on, okay? Just like this, okay? Just like that, oops. The rubber piece back on there just like that okay make sure it wraps around underneath like this okay so now we're gonna get the computer back all right I need to put the rubbing alcohol away okay so the main tricky part is just making sure all these cables remain on top as you try and push this um, board back in place so you want to do basically reverse, so it's slightly rotated this way as you put in the um, charge port connectors as well as kind of raised up. And then you want to make sure these cables all end up on top. Okay, you got the trackpad cable, the battery cable. The wireless antenna ones is probably going to be the hardest to do. Just pull it and bend it out of the way a little bit. Okay, just like that. All right, and then you got the headphone jack connector there. Oh, oops, I almost forgot. <laughs> Don't forget to reconnect the LCD LVDS cable on the bottom here. If you forget that, then you're gonna have to take everything back out. So just line it back up. All right, you can kind of use the screw holes to guide it and then push it down, okay. Just like that, and you'll feel it kind of click into place. Then we'll take the screws and put them back in. Okay, just like that. All right. Screws, come on, go in. It's, it's going slightly tilted, so it doesn't want to go in. Here we go. All right, tighten that screw in, put the little plastic down, get the other screw, same thing. I'm kind of thinking that this might all have been for nothing because I'm pretty sure the board is toast, but we will find out. All right, 
Sometimes some of the components are like redundancy things and it will actually work even if those things are burnt, but we will find out once we get it all back together. All right, got all those screws back in. Okay, and now seat it back in, same as like I was saying earlier, and make sure all these cables end up on top. So you got the headphone jack, keyboard connector, battery, trackpad, and the Wi-Fi antennas, okay? So again, put it at that angle. Make sure the Wi-Fi antennas are out of the way. Slowly twist it back in place, okay? Get that cable on top, battery cable on top, headphone jack cable on top. Slowly lower it, make sure this cable is out of the way. You might have to wiggle this a little bit to get it to fall in, and there we go. Dropped into place. Okay. All right, so now what we're gonna do is try and just reconnect everything. All right, the tricky part is I have to remember where all the screws came from. So first we're gonna get the T5 screw that was holding down the heat sink. I'm just gonna put it loosely for now. All right, and you kind of wanna make sure these rubber things line up and go into the gap where the fan is, okay? So it has a little place where it's supposed to line up and drop in, All right? I'm gonna push back down the headphone jack connector, just like that. Okay. Then we're gonna take this bracket and put it back on, All right? I like to put the screws in loosely at first, so that way I can make sure all the screw holes line up. All right. Just like that, all right. Grab this screw, put that one in. The board looks a little bit out of alignment. Okay. Make sure it's pushed all the way to the side. I like to kind of squeeze this to keep it held there. Then we can tighten this screw in loosely. Okay. Then we will get the two screws for the um, trackpad connector. Line this up, push it down. All right, you can stick back down the adhesive. Get this, put that on top. All right. Get this screw in. Get another screw. All right, put that screw in. There you go. These you can tighten down because they're just holding the bracket on top of the or it's just the, for the bracket holding that down. All right, let's see here. What other screws are we missing? Got that, okay. Got the, I guess we can put the SSD in first. Okay, hold the tape back or the adhesive, slide it in place, push it back in. There we go, perfect. Put that tape back down. Put these SSD screws back in. I don't know if the customer moved some of these screws because these two screws were a little bit different. So they might have taken them out and then mixed them up. All right, so let's see here. We got that. Okay, I think they mixed something up here. So we'll get this screw here. It goes there. We'll take these two screws up here and then put those in. All right, put down the wireless antennas, put that screw in, all right? Again, I, I put all the screws loosely. So, okay, for the wireless antenna, just like every other model, just line up the antenna over the connector. And then I kind of run my nail over it to see if it doesn't move, then I know it's lined up, then you can pop it down. Same thing with this one. All right, line it up. A little bit tricky. Come on. All right. Oops. There we go. Line it up. Pop it down. There we go. All right. Last screw for the motherboard or the logic board here. 
just like that. Oops, I'm using the wrong screwdriver. All right, oops, let's zoom back out. Okay, so we'll tighten up all the screws now. All right. Just like that. I already tightened these two. Okay. Take that one down and tighten down this bracket. There we go, just like that. All right, and then don't forget the one up in this corner here. All right, so we got all the screws tightened down. Now we're gonna switch back to the T4. And we're gonna connect this thing back in place. All right, so reconnected the screen, get the bracket. The thing I find that helps is you can get the screw, All right? Take the bracket, put the screw in the bracket, and then you can use the bracket to help you guide it into place. All right, oops. Sometimes it helps to hold the bracket up while you try and put the screw in. Let's see here. I don't know why it's falling out like that. There we go. Okay, grab the other screw. Line up the bracket. And then tighten it in. All right. So and then retight and then completely tighten down that one. All right, now the little holder, same idea. Get the screw, get the bracket, put it through. Line it up. This screw is much longer, so it's a little bit trickier to do it. Kind of want to hold it to the side so you can get it level. Come on. Oh no. I flipped it upside down. This is the trickiest one to do. Okay. Come on, go back in. There we go. Need a little bit better lighting. There we go. Alright, there we go. Swing that around, line it up. And then it's a little tricky because the screw likes to tip over when you try and do it. So you have to make sure to put it completely straight down as you twist it. There we go. Okay, and then we can tighten this up. There we go. Okay, so we've got all those screws back in. Oh, we got to do the last two. So get this little hinge cover, put it in at an angle like this, and then drop it down. You want to make sure the plastic goes underneath this metal piece of the frame, not on top. Okay. Take the T4 screw and screw it in. There we go. Alright, and then tighten it down. I don't know why, but these two screws go in a lot better. Maybe these are like T3 screws, I don't know. Alright, so now we'll grab the speakers. Make sure we reconnect everything else. Reconnect the keyboard here. Oh, make sure the latch is up. Okay, just like that. If the keyboard's broken, the Mac won't turn on. So, or the power button won't work, but it might turn on when we plug in the charger. All right, then reconnect the speaker, just like that. Make sure it's in all the way, and then put the latch down. Okay, oops. You have to kind of put this side at an angle to get these speakers in. 
So kind of lift it up, All right? Rotate it slightly and then slide that in at an angle. There we go. Drop that down, make sure this stayed connected. There we go. All right, go back to the T5 screwdriver. Sorry if I went out of view and we'll put these screws in. Okay, I always like to twist it backwards first to feel the click to make sure it's in the right spot. This one's not doing it, so that means it's not in right. Let's see here. Something's not lined up right. Oh, okay, it needs to go slightly forward. So I need to push this up this way. Come on, come on, where is it? There we go. All right. Tighten these down, just like that. All right, get the other speaker. Same thing, make sure the latch is up. Slide this in first to make it easier. Drop it down. Sorry if my head gets in the way. Connector. Let it slide in, All right? Put the latch down, just like that. Put that down. All right, grab the little screws. Okay, grab the second one. Take that. There we go. All right, now the last piece is the battery. So let's plug that in or put the screw back in. Just like that. All right, and then slide this cable in. Let's see if I can zoom in a little bit for you on that one. So lift the plastic piece out of the way. This piece is gonna just peel off, I think, because <laughs> they Took it out earlier. Slide that in. Hopefully you can see. Okay, and then put the latch down. There we go. And then this goes on top. Okay. Line it up and then push it down just like that. Okay. There we go. So now we got the whole Mac back together. I think I didn't miss anything, right? Yep. Okay. Now, I put the cover back on. Usually for testing, instead of sliding it back on, um, because I might have to take it out again, I just put it like this, and then I push the clips down. So that way this part is still loose here on the back. All right, so we're gonna open this up. Okay, I'm gonna get the charging cable. All right, and then let's plug it in and see if anything happens. The connector was really loose. I don't think anything. Actually, the trackpad is on, so it's doing something, but I don't see anything on the screen, so the screen is possibly dead. Yeah, I feel I feel the trackpad is on, so that usually means that the computer is on. Uh, when I unplug it, it's completely dead, so battery is very likely dead. Plug that in. Nothing. Oh, it starts clicking. So while it's plugged in, it's doing something, but nothing comes on the screen. There's no um, battery charge sound. So that usually means that the board is dead. I'm going to, I'm trying a SMC reset, which is control option shift and then the power button. Um, but I don't think actually it did turn it off. It seems okay. Turn back on. Nothing's on the screen. So I might have to try with a external adapter, but, um, that's pretty much how you open up and disassemble this Mac. Looks like it's dead, sadly. Yeah, the moment I unplug it, it doesn't do anything. Um, 
so it looks like it's not working. I'm going to try disconnecting the battery and see if it does anything different. So again, this is why I did that, so I can just pop this back up. Okay. Alright. Now I'm going to try it with the battery disconnected. So we're going to pull this cable out, pull that latch up, pull the cable out. And then we're going to disconnect the battery screw. Pull the metal bracket up slightly so it's no longer connected. Alright, now let's try plugging it in while it's like this. Alright. Right now nothing's happening. There you go, trackpad's clicking. The fan is spinning here. So it's doing something, but I have a feeling the screen is toast. Maybe that's what's going on, or it's the screen and the board. I don't see anything on the screen at all. Yeah. But anyways, that's pretty much all there is to disassembling this MacBook. The battery, to do it, to remove it, you have to kind of scrape underneath. It's like all the other Retina models and everything. So the trackpad's still moving, but the fan stopped, so I think it's completely dead. But um, yeah, hopefully this video helped you guys. If it did, please like and subscribe, because that'll help others find these videos. Thank you for watching. Hopefully this video helped you. And yeah, I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye.